Hello, Barry College. Welcome to Viking Vision News at 7. I'm Emily Williams. And I'm Susanna Sisko. Barry College is in the midst of planning new renovations for several buildings on campus, which have been in desperate need of upgrades. It may take years before all the renovations are completed. Tracy Callison has the story. Barry College has a reputation for being one of the most beautiful campuses in the world, but a closer look at some of the buildings provides a much different view of the campus. We spoke to Matt Warren, the head resident of the men's dorm, about the current condition of one of the neediest buildings on campus. Um, Dana does have its problems, um, just like any other area on campus, and we're hoping to renovate it fairly soon. It's sunk to a level that we can't actually fix the dorm all at once, and they're going to have to do it wing by wing, and each wing's going to take about a semester to fix. Well, in 2009, we're planning on building two new dormitories out behind the old dairy barns. And when those are completed, we'll have a place to move the guys out of Dana one wing at a time so we can begin renovations. So hopefully, we'll start renovations in 2009. Barry College's theater is also in need of re renovations. We spoke to Heather Bush, president of the Barry College Theater Company, about changes she'd like to see. I definitely think right now that what needs the most renovation is classrooms. We only have two classrooms in the building, our regular classroom and our seminar room, both of which are upstairs and are very difficult for students to find, especially our theater appreciation students. I think that not having adequate class space, classroom space in the theater is what affects students most. And we do a lot of work in this space. So I think that it would be better if it was more comfortable for our students and our faculty to work in. You know, we really need to present a good face for Barry College and to um, give a great first impression. For Viking Vision News, this is Tracy Callison. Details for a new residence hall renovations have yet to be announced. Thursday, November 8th marks the premiere of VCTC's performance of The Stick Wife. The play takes place in 1963 in Birmingham, Alabama, where a bombing of an African-American church kills four little girls. Keith Brooks, who plays one of the central characters, is here with us tonight to give us his own perspective on the drama. Hi, Keith, how are you doing? Hi, hey. <laughs> guys, how are you? Good. <laughs> well, we have a few questions for you. Emily, do you want to take the first one? Yeah, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the play? Well, um, the play really centers on the families of the men who perpetrated the bombing and really takes the um, point of view of, of the wives of these men who committed these heinous acts. So it's kind of a a story told through feminism and deals with a lot of different controversial issues and whatnot. So, right. So we've heard you did a lot, of, like some background research before. Like you went to a KKK <laughs> rally. Yeah. Is this true? Well, kind of. Um, we, in every piece that we do, we always try to do a lot of research about the characters. Um, we read a lot of books uh, and everything. But the couple of members of the cast, including myself, we actually went to Birmingham where the bombing actually occurred. Got in touch with members of the Klan. Um, with members of this particular sect of the Klan that actually did this, went to the church that was bombed, talked to people that survived the bombing, wow. the FBI agents who arrested the men, and kind of tried to get our heads around the entire issue itself. Wow. So, mm. um, so your role in the play, how is, can you tell us about that? Um, yes. Um, my role, um, my character's name is Ed Bliss. Uh, he's named after, uh, based on an actual person named, I think, Tom Chambliss is his real name. Um, and he is the person that actually leaves the bomb at the church. Um, and so, wow. really bad guy is what I am, I guess. Pretty intense character. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, why do you think the play was chosen? Like, do you feel that racism is really still relevant today and that's one of the reasons it was chosen, or? I think hatred is a relevant issue no matter what it is. I don't know if particularly, I know racism is prevalent in a lot of different places, but I think there's a lack of understanding in the world in general. And so this play really brings to light a lot of those issues, uh, how men and women don't understand each other, or, or whites or blacks, or just anybody, but we can fall by the wayside uh, when it comes to comprehension of human souls, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sorry if that's too deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what do you think the response from students here at Barry is gonna be, or that you would hope that it would be? Uh, I hope it'll be one where they come to the piece and they actually learn something from it, because it offers a lot, it's a very, intense play and there's a lot of big issues that it tackles so it's it's hard to get through without being touched you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I hope they, they come to it and, and experience something unlike they've ever experienced before wow. so do I <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much Katie. yes thank, thank you, you. Um, the play will run November 8th through the 11th and the 15th through the 18th 
The house opens um, at 7.30 and the show will begin at 8 o'clock. Um, the tickets are $7 with a discount and on opening night of $5. And keep in mind that the show is rated PG-13 and cultural events credit is available. And for reservations, you can call the box office at 706-236-2263. Don't miss this spectacular performance. VD technology and the way to cover local and global events are constantly changing. Students at Barry travel to the nation's capital to get the latest on the communication world. Viking Vision's Lauren Wright has more. This is a big day for Barry College senior Audrey Bright. The communication major is headed to not one, but two separate job interviews. That was just one of the many things she and nine other Barry students experienced at the National Media Convention in Washington, D.C. I am looking for anything having to do with writing or editing or uh, anything from print to online or magazines. Thousands of college students from as far away as Hawaii gathered at the D.C. Hilton for three days of learning the latest media trends from the pros. Some attendees, like Audrey, were chosen to interview with real media companies for the chance to get a job after graduation. I hope that they don't ask me anything about their company that I don't know about. I reviewed a little bit. I got on both of their companies' websites last night and just kind of looked at some key aspects of them. But um, I hope they don't. Just any question that I don't know the answer to, I hope they don't ask me. <laughs> and of course, when you're in D.C., you have to check out all the sites, including some of the fine restaurants. The convention takes place in different cities every fall. Audrey says she recommends going if you're serious about entering the world of media. Well, the great thing about this convention is that there's something for everyone. So in a particular time slot, you know, there's sessions on anything from photography to uh, editing and writing to, um, you know, how to plan for a future job or career. And hopefully the experience she and the other communication students gained here will make them more prepared for life after Barry. For Viking Vision News, this is Lauren Wright. You don't have to be a communications major to go to the National Media Convention. If you are interested in attending next year, see Kevin Klein or Mark Hanna in the Laughlin Building. 